which was around the egg, no more like a millstone, a plumbing stone, by God. Damn them all. Like I got a, a free pen because I answered a question correctly. I mean, it was about movies, so I should have, so, <laughs> but yeah. Kind of like uh, Lloyd from Say Anything. Um, sure. Have you never seen I, it? Is that the... No, I'm thinking Stan isn't so. I haven't seen Stan. No, this is though. John Cusack holding the stereo over his head in the rain. Oh, right. <laughs> I haven't seen it. No, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah, there's a great line in it where his girlfriend breaks up with him by giving him a pen. Oh. Uh, and because she's going off to school and she's like, write me. And he says, I gave her my heart and she gave she me a gave pen. Me a pen. <laughs> That's um, that is good writing. I like that a lot. Is that yeah. who, who did that? That's uh, Cameron Crowe, who oh, did, okay. uh, you know, Fast Times and mm -hmm. Almost Famous and yeah, a bunch of stuff. Yeah, yeah, a bunch of good stuff. Yeah, that well, that doesn't surprise me. I'm coming out with a line like that. Yeah, it's uh, it is very of its time to be sure. <laughs> you know, it's kind of that. Mid well, no one writes late. letters anymore. <laughs> well, there's that, but also just it is emo as all get out. I love it. I yeah, love it. I'm gonna have, it, I'm gonna check that out just purely for that description alone. <laughs> yeah. Oh, if you're, oh my God, there's a uh, there's a rap he does. Oh, oh no. Him? No, no, no. <laughs> it's one of his friends that hangs out at the gas and sip. Uh, is the name of the place. Still white though. I, I'm assuming his friend is still oh, white. Sure. <laughs> white oh, as they yeah. come. And uh, it, I, I swear to God. I could have dementia and I will remember this because the first <laughs> time I saw it, it made me laugh so hard. Um, but the guy goes, Lloyd, Lloyd, all null and void, listening to the truth he's trying to avoid. <laughs> it's ridiculous. You it's know, I, I, uh, I, I can pretty much, I just listening to that, I bet, I bet that uh, Kevin Smith has taken a little bit from that. With like oh, yeah. smoking weed, smoking weed, and all of that. Like, oh, I don't know. How does that fucking thing start? Once I get it started, and I fucking know the rest. Noy, noy, noy. No, smoking yeah. weed. weed, smoking weed, doing so. Uh, we're doing blunts, drinking beers, drinking beers, 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 uh, rolling fatty, smoking blunts. Who smokes the blunts? We smoke the blunts. Oh, yeah, it's fucking stupid. It's fucking stupid nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. Noise, noise, noise. Smoking weed. Yeah, I'll fuck my life. <laughs> fuck it, you know. <laughs> oh, are you ready to do this? <laughs> yeah. You're, you're, please don't put that in the episode. <laughs> Just me oh, being... yeah. Oh, this will all go in. <laughs> Just me being white as all hell. <laughs> oh, I, I, I started with the people. Say Anything rap, so. Oh, okay. Um... Well, yeah, as long as there's context. <laughs> Speaking of being emo, mm -hmm. uh, boy, do we have one for us, which, look, first of all, welcome to the Heart of Horror. I'm Bo. Welcome, welcome. I'm Kate. And we are, as ever, looking at a horror film that has uh, romantical elements. Mm -hmm. And you had never seen this film. No, this is the last remaining Benson and Moorhead movie I had yet to watch. All right, well... Let, let's just talk about this before we jump into anything else. Um, oh, funny enough, I'm actually just, sorry to interrupt you, I'm weirdly, completely by accident, I'm actually just staring right at my uh, Blu-ray of The Endless. Great it's movie. Just in, it's just in my eyeline, I completely, I just, yeah, by accident. Anyway, sorry. So, all right, let me say something about The Endless, which I adore. I think it's a wonderful movie. And I had seen an interview with, Vincent and Moorhead, and in the course of the interview, they said, yes, there is this kind of reference to resolution in the film. Mm -hmm. And on some message board or another, when this movie came out, I was like, man, uh, you know, the, the people were talking about the movie. And I, I said, yeah, it's, it's such a great movie. And the fact that they kind of weave in some of resolution is terrific. And this guy... Yeah jumped all over my shit about it. I was like, hey, man, 
I was like, yeah, I mean, you're right. If you didn't know that, perhaps it, it would be a welcome surprise. But also, the directors are out there talking about this. <laughs> you know, it's not like I'm going around being like, look, the director said don't tell anybody, but I'm going to be sneaky. <laughs> I, you know, like this was up front. So what was, and, this, hang on, what was this guy saying? Oh, he was just like, oh, you're, you're spoiling it for people. I'm like, A, oh, I did not God. talk about how it references it. No. B, it, this is not secret knowledge. Mm. And C, I'm sorry if I broke your rules of movie watching <laughs> random internet stranger. <laughs> yes. Because I'm careful about that. Like, I don't I don't go around telling, you know, I, like after I saw the Spitterman, um, I didn't run around telling everybody everything that happened in, in the Spider-Man movie. So, you know. I mean, oh, real quick. So yeah. I work at a cinema, which shall remain nameless. I'm not allowed to say its name um, <laughs> because I say horrendous things and I can't be representing them while I do it. Um, and uh, anyway, so <clears throat> it was within a couple of days of um, Spiderman coming out um, or Mr. Spiderman. And, Irving uh, Spiderman, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and there were these kids that were causing a load of trouble. These kids come in a lot. We know they cause trouble, but we can't flat out ban them, unfortunately. Um, but they always cause trouble anyway. So we were a bit on high alert with them being in there because they were unsupervised by their parents as well. Um, and sure enough, within like 20 minutes of the film starting we get complaints from customers in the screen saying like these kids are running around they're, they're shouting they're like whatever so we go in and basically kick them out and on the way out of this as we're leaving the screen while we're still in the screen they start screaming out spoilers because they'd come in like on opening day to watch it um and they start screaming yelling out spoilers and the movie's like 20 minutes in and i had I, I oh my god i was so angry i i yelled at them <laughs> um, I was just like, get out! <laughs> These like, I think they were, they were about twelve years old. Um, Some people uh, just want to see the world burn, Master Wayne. <laughs> I yeah, that I don't understand. I and just you told uh, me also about the person that did the uh, like wrote in the oh, bathroom. Did I tell you this already? Spoilers. Yeah, yeah. On the first opening night, um, some asshole had written proper spoilers on the wall. Um, in the men's loose, in the men's bathroom. Um, and because we were so friggin' busy, we had um, a thousand people in our cinema at any one time um, that day. Um, we did not, things like bathroom checks, we had to kind of forego just because we had such a constant stream of people coming through the doors. Um, and things like piracy checks were far more prudent. Um, so it was a good couple of hours before like between checks and it was only at the end of the night did we realize that someone had written spoilers and like and some arsehole had come in specifically to do that because i don't imagine people just walk around with like permanent markers on them so um yeah like and we it was like at the end of the night that we found found it so god knows how many people had seen it unless that's <laughs> just you know his evil villain i mean kind of yeah. vibe of the, i'm the spoiler maybe yeah maybe he came through a portal and stuff and we just didn't have time to do anything about it i gotta tell you when i saw uh the spider-man yeah um i legit rolled a tear it mm -hmm. really got me i thought it was it was oh, surprisingly yeah. emotional yeah yeah there's a couple of points like a good few points um uh, what's really great about my job is we get to because where we do our piracy checks and stuff um is we get we all oh, first off we get night vision goggles oh that's pretty cool it's really badass uh, and they zoom in and shit and they have heat sensors and stuff so like if you if you're recording on a phone and your phone's obviously been on for a little while and it's got like heat bits on it it will sense the heat from your phone oh my god it's really cool anyway um not that's not the point of my story um Still pretty cool though it is pretty cool um so i we have to go in at particular times um i think it's presumably like to Oh, no, because it's the same time every time. I was thinking it would be like, so we didn't go in at like key moments to like, you know, potentially distract people. But I don't think it is because it's the same amount of time per movie. And I don't think movies are quite that predictable. Um, but anyway, so um, I went in at one point, though, and um, I was a little bit late and I managed to catch it. Where, oh, wait, hang on. Shit. It's not really a spoiler. It's not like it's it's a bit when a certain character turns up. 
Can I say it? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, 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 I love fair warning. Slight spoilers for Spider-Man No Way Home, but everybody in the world's seen it. And if you haven't, skip ahead 30 seconds. Yeah. So when Tobey Maguire comes through the portal, um, and I got to see everyone's reaction to it, and it was just, it was like magic. It was just like, oh, this, this is why we have cinema. This shit right here is why movies are amazing. Because like the entire audience, even though people kind of knew it was coming because they did not hide it whatsoever, um, which is why I wasn't really sure if it was a spoiler or not. But yeah, everyone's face just lit up and there was this like kind of like <gasps> that rang through and I was like, yes, it's so good. Yeah, it, I, I, that movie, I, I kind of love it and, and loathe it at the same time. I, I mean, mm-hmm. I love everything about it. it, it I'm a fan of. Uh, Spider-Man from back when I was a kid reading the comics and I've yeah. enjoyed all the movies and I mean some more so than others of course but <laughs> I've, I've seen them all for sure and and when when they let me down it, it hurt a little bit because I, I like oh. the character so much and seeing this movie was such a uh, you know I mean fan service yes but also just the the craft that the movie employs to bring all of that together. Yeah. And also is, I feel like right some wrongs. Yes, absolutely. And it, right. It, it not it, all of the stuff there feels narratively satisfying as opposed mm-hmm. to just being, you know, a member Barry movie of like, <laughs> Hey, you remember this thing? It, there are little bits of that here sure, and there. I remember. <laughs> yeah. But it's, for the most part, it's like, oh no, this is actually in service of the story, and yeah, yeah, it makes sense, right? And so, uh, somebody a while back I heard refer to this as IP fracking, where you just go in like, hey, here's a bunch of you know stuff that people remember from the 80s or the 90s or early 2000s or whenever mm-hmm. it was, whenever whatever the nostalgia cutoff point is, and mm-hmm. we're just going to turn that into a movie, and it doesn't matter if it makes a whole lot of sense. It just needs to have all the stuff that you want to see. You all know? I can think of is the Matrix right now. <laughs> to a certain extent, but even that, I think the front end of that is sort of like, well, this is addressing that very impulse. You yeah. Know? Yeah, very uh, true, I suppose. And I, I'm thinking more of like the movie Solo, where it's like, hey. Oh, I never got around to that. Uh, spoilers for the movie Solo. The whole <laughs> yeah. thing is just like, hey, do you want to see the Kessel Run that they talked about in Star Wars? Here it right. is. Here's how he met Chewbacca. Here's how Chewie got his nickname. And it's like, I don't need to see all that stuff. It's just stuff I like. Wait, how? You know? Were we just not sure for Chewbacca? Yeah, it, it totally is. But there's a moment in the movie where Han Solo is like, hmm, Chewbacca, that's a little too long. I'm going to call you Chewie. And you're like, oh, for fuck's sake. Did not need that explaining. (laughs) Right. Yeah. yeah. People know how nicknames work. Right. It's it's (laughs) stuff like, here's how he got the vest. It's like, I don't care how he got the fucking article of clothing. Yeah, but it is cool, though, when we find out how Spike got his leather coat and Buffy. Well, sure. That's that's a different thing. It's different, though, isn't it? Yeah. That's that's within the context of, like, that show was still on the air. It's not like they did a reunion show. (laughs) Oh, yeah, no, true. To show you. So, yeah. So I have my problems. And and that's why I think a movie like No Way Home is kind of dangerous. Because it does a lot of stuff and it does it really well. Which is just... And it made all of the money. So a bunch of people are going to try to do the same thing. Only they're not going to have nearly the, the talent. Mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> that's so it's very just, true it's just gonna be a bunch of ripoff stuff that like is gonna make you roll your eyes so hard that you're gonna have to have corrective surgery yeah yeah um the i was speaking to uh jamie uh the lovely jamie j Simmons, the other day about scream and um and not that she, i mean you've seen uh hers and brian's reviews on on Facebook or whatever. It's not that they don't like the movie. They really do like the movie. But the first thing she said was, boy, I'm so sick of meta. (laughs) And I'm like, I kind of get you because I think when it's done well, it's done well. Like I really enjoyed it in Scream. Um, I really enjoy it in in No Way Home. Um, I got got really sick of it in The Matrix. Um, I think I do need to maybe give that film another go. but I was just kind of like, I don't even, this, 
for me, I don't know, maybe I was just really tired, but it just didn't even make sense half the time. Oh, sure. Yeah, you um, have to kind of go deep on all the Matrix sequels, which why on earth would you? Because they're not very good. <laughs> yeah, I just, um, I, I do need to give it another go. I'll be honest, I was quite tired. <clears throat> I think I actually did fall asleep for about 10 minutes or so of it as well, which helps nothing, <laughs> helps nothing with that film. But um but yeah, like I was just like, oh my gosh, like all you're doing is flat out using just half the movie is clips from the first movie. Yeah. I mean, you're not wrong. But and I, don't, I understand I don't wanna... why. I understand. I do understand why, but I'm just like, I don't know. It just felt a little bit like I just now want to go watch the first movie. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah. Like I don't ever want to be in the position where I have to defend the matrix Re- Re- matrix resurrections like full throatedly yeah. because i think the first 45 minutes is really interesting yeah and then yeah. i think after that i kind of don't care yeah i was just like what's everyone bitching about this is fucking cool like you know, like, and then i was just like oh okay <laughs> yeah so yeah. never mind but yeah spider-man was cool what were we talking about oh yeah so the point of all of this that we started with the endless and spoilers that was, this is mm-hmm, all my fault mm-hmm. oh yeah that's right yeah because then i was saying about work and you're like okay cool 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 i'm with you on with this <laughs> so the point of all of that though was that uh i had seen spring already and i was excited to talk about it and then you said oh i've never seen it and it's the only benson and moorhead movie mm. i haven't seen and that really made me excited to talk about it <laughs> because <laughs> this uh, this might be my favorite movie of theirs. Oh, you know, I was thinking, I was thinking earlier, I was just like, this is definitely high up there. And the, th- <laughs> the thing is, right, is that I then feel bad because I realized that all of my, my, like, basically, I can't choose a favorite out of all of them apart from resolution. But that's not because I don't like the movie, but I just, I like, the endless and synchronic and spring but all for very different reasons and so when I have films like that that like I like for very different reasons I can't pick a favorite because I get something from each of them that I can't really compare um but then I feel bad about resolution so I'm like oh no because I love resolution too so I'm going to shove that in there but it's partly for pity's sake because I I feel bad that it's the only one not included in my top list but I do really like resolution as well I don't know. It's, it's it's really difficult. I do know that when I was watching this, um, I was completely, completely sucked in. Like, I forgot I was watching um, anything other than, like, a, a romantic drama, quirky, cute story. And it was only, like, at a couple of points, I was like, oh, yeah, no shit. Yeah, this is a, this is a Benson and Moorhead movie. Shit is going to go down. But, like, for the longest time, I was like, oh, my God, these guys are so cute. Mm-hmm. and that was it <laughs> you know like I was just like I just could watch these guys all day it gave me kind of like before and after sunset vibes oh for sure yeah it's it but what with if... Lovecraft thrown in yeah absolutely that is the perfect description of it and when people ask you know well what is spring about it's like it, that's what it is it's before sunrise with tentacles yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah and... I always forget which way around it is <laughs> So, yeah, I, I haven't seen, I think I've seen Before Sunrise and I've seen Before Sunset. I've seen them both. I forget which one's which. It's, it was over 10 years ago. I forget one's, which one's which, but I know that I love them. <laughs> I'll tell you another way you get me to love your movie is you slip a little Jeremy Gardner into it. I mean, right? Who is, uh, again, terrific, as he always is. Mm-hmm. But, mm-hmm. so... Aside from being sucked into it, at what point in the movie, <laughs> like, where is the the point where you decide, oh, okay, yes, this is a Benson and Moorhead movie? Oh, okay. So <laughs> I can tell you the exact moment. Um, do you want me to tell you now? Or should I tell you when we get there? No, go ahead and tell me now, and we'll we'll get to the plot here in a second. It's probably it's probably obvious, um, but oh, well, maybe this is the moment where I was like, oh shit, this is the Benson and Moorhead movie, but um it was the uh, no that bit I think was probably earlier on um uh, probably in like the when we first sort of see her on her own shall we say oh in the alley or whatever 
No, not in that. Even in the alley before that, when she's like eating the rabbit intestines. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, like that was probably the first bit. But there was a bit when we see her in all her full glory. I so I was eating some toast and I just I put my toast, my plate down on the table and I just sat up in my chair and I was like, right. I just every I just literally just put everything down no distraction not that I wasn't watching I was watching it but you know I had my toast and I was just kind of watching it and I had my coffee and whatever and I was just like nope toast is going down I'm like literally sat in up straight as no slouching I am yeah this has got my complete and utter full attention here what the fuck is going on <laughs> this is amazing um, yeah um I got I went from snuggy to um very high alert <laughs> and paired with the movie the larger theme for tonight's show uh that i want to address with you is the question that the movie kind of poses for at least the third act mm -hmm. which is how do you know when you're in love oh that's i didn't think we were going to go down that route i thought we were going to go on holiday flings <laughs> well just, we could also i'll, re talk about I'll reshuffle flings. all the stories i have in my head into something else <laughs> yeah well feel free to drop in a holiday fling story i i, I had <laughs> this wasn't a vacation fling but there was one semester of college for sure uh -huh. that was just like oh this is this will never see the light of day but it was a <laughs> wonderful time uh, while it lasted, you know? Yeah, nice. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, I, you know, it's something that I, I find interesting because I, at one time in my life, when I was younger, I would have told you that there is a person for everybody. Mm. And I think the wisdom I have gained is that there's not a person for everybody. There are people for everybody. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there's not a single soulmate that like you will never, ever get over. I mean, there are people you don't fully get over just because, you know, of, of circumstance. And sometimes, you know, somebody yeah. twists the knife on the way out and you're like, Oh fuck, that's going to linger. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> Check out our episode about spontaneous. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> For reference. <laughs> but, but um, yeah, but I also think that, it, you know, like, relationships require that you kind of tend those gardens. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, it, and I think there was some scientific study not too long ago that said it really isn't, like, your partner certainly matters, but it is absolutely the work that you put into the relationship that makes it work or not mm -hmm. that, oh, yeah. that you, you just can't let it like it can't be like oh, we love each other and therefore everything will always be great <laughs> oh no yeah yeah love is not enough <laughs> yeah so yeah. nice I mean, to it, break it to you <laughs> well i mean it certainly helps and it's necessary i mean yeah it's a, it's a core ingredient but you can't make cake with just eggs that's true Right. Uh, yeah yeah like there's a lot that you right as you said there are a lot of a lot of things that go into that recipe but you know a, a large portion of the movie like i said on the, on the back end in particular is about that idea of like when when do you know you're in love yes and i think for me at least in my early years my teen years mm -hmm. um because i was a little love starved it was really like, oh, if you pay me enough attention, I'm in love. Right. Which is a bad place to be in. <laughs> but yeah. but it it happened, you know. I'm I'm certainly better now, but um <laughs> but when I was a kid, and and by kid I mean like teenager, yeah, yeah. It it was really that. It was like, oh, if, if somebody if somebody shows me a little bit of like interest and and time and concern and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. then I yeah I would just go head over heels in a heartbeat oh that's really sweet I think for me uh when I we're talking teenagers uh so uh yeah so I spoke about the um I've spoken about him before is the guy who had a lesbian girlfriend who was in love with me um <laughs> uh see episode one for that drama um <laughs> So anyways, me and him, we dated all of four months after all of that. <laughs> um, 
but I fell in love like I mean to be honest I think I was in love with him anyway before we even got together just because of like the tension and like essentially emotional foreplay of nine months that we had before we actually got together um so when we actually did get together I think I did fall like pretty head over heels because we had kind of denied ourselves for so long if that makes sense yeah yeah, yeah. um but he was a 17 year old boy and so didn't you know he was just happy to be getting laid with someone who actually wanted to shag him um so um familiar sensation I get it (laughs) um so also you know I think I was probably pretty good in bed because I was also 17 and a lot bendier than I am now um (laughs) (laughs) um (laughs) it was all above age people don't worry (laughs) um I mean in England anyway actually it wasn't for America but well yeah but also like kids uh, spoilers kids fuck yeah they really do (laughs) yeah Um, because it's fun it it's real great. fun. If you haven't tried it, I would recommend. So um, <laughs> unless you're like 12, don't do it then. Um, right, right, right. I'm, I'm saying eh, 16 and up. Yeah, yeah, I feel like that's good. Definitely wasn't 15 when I lost my virginity. Um, but yeah, so um, I think, yeah, I think it was just a whole bunch of things of like hormones and just having like, you know, delayed gratification and um, yeah, just a whole mix of, that kind of stuff but yeah that was like it was it was puppy love sure but it was um it was hard hitting and probably like the most intense that I've felt emotionally in that way my entire life just because everything is so heightened when you're a teenager and you don't really sort of take anything else into consideration um and I just and I just knew that I just wanted to spend all my time with him um which is ultimately was the breakdown of our relationship because when I say all my time I meant all my time every single second of every single day that I wasn't in school (laughs) um (laughs) I was with him and I he felt that yeah um and um he broke up when he broke up with me he said I need he goes he says (laughs) I can laugh about it now he says um yeah I just I need some space and I was like what do you mean (laughs) what do you mean you don't want to spend every single second of every single waking moment with me are you crazy what uh, my head's like my head's like bending at an unnatural angle like my wild crazy eyes going what what do you mean right um, yeah. like <laughs> full psychotic um <laughs> I don't think I was that bad but I'm pretty sure that's all he saw um but yeah but uh, yeah I think I was just there I just wanted to spend all my time with him um and I just didn't I just all I thought about was him and I was a really horny teenager and I would it was kind of a joke with my friends that I would just check out everything and everyone um but when I was with him, when while I was with him as in like we were together um not just when I was physically with him um I I just did, I wasn't interested in anyone I didn't care less I didn't want to know about anyone I didn't want to look at anyone I literally I just did not care about a single other person in that way um which was very unlike me so um yeah I think that was it but like in terms of like is it like a switch that turns on and you go, oh, I'm in love now? Like it's, it's different every time. I think. Well, for me, it's been it's been different every time. I've been in love about mm, 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 three times, maybe three and a half. I think the second time wasn't really love. I think it was just, yeah, I don't think it was love. I think I've been in love for three times. I like the half. Like, well, I mean, it was it was love adjacent. Yeah, it kind of. I would have definitely gone there um, had he not cheated on me um but um (laughs) yeah uh oh that wasn't even that was the least messiest thing about that relationship i'm sure that will come up at some point on future episodes um (laughs) so um (laughs) but yeah uh if i if we'd gone down that path then yeah i'd definitely fall in love with him but i don't think i was there quite yet but i was saying it thinking that i was but with the beauty of hindsight i don't think that i was so yeah i think i've been in love three times i'm trying to think if that feels right as well Three times for like for for realsies being in love. Yeah, you have like your first puppy love, and then you have your kind of like your test of love. Yeah, you know where it's kind of like this could be serious, and then you realize all the things that you don't not want in a relationship or with that person. Um, and then you have like you probably like more often than not you have at least keep her for a while love, like the one you'll probably have a really long term with thing, maybe a marriage, maybe a kid or something. Um, and then after that, it's maybe just the 
you know, if you have another love after that, it will be due to some other circumstance. Yeah. yeah. I, I know that like the first college love, the, like, the, again, the for realsies one, mm -hmm. and it was really the first time that I was with somebody that I just got very enthusiastic about the shit she was into. Right. You know, like, yeah. like it, that, that sense of discovery where like she was really funny and I was attracted to her and all that. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, like it would come up like, yeah. Um, she, she was a drummer, oh, but not like for a band. Cool. She, right. She just knew how to drum and oh, just for her own amusement. That's even better. Right. And when she told me that I was like, what? Like, and, and we're dating? This is awesome. Were you thinking about that wrist action? No, well, I mean, I wasn't not a thinking about her. A little bit. <laughs> a little but it was bit. just, it was just cool. You know, yeah, it was cool. like, I was really into, I was really into her because I thought that she was a really like bright, funny, interesting person. Nice. And you right. And that was the point where I was like, I might be in love with her. Like this might be, you know, certainly, and we dated for, you know, a couple of years. So mm. it was, uh, we were together for a while. Mm. Um, and that was the first time where I was like, Oh, okay. So this is what, this is what it is. Not just the, like the hormonal rush and that kind of thing, but yeah, also just really liking a person. Yeah. Yeah, and, definitely. And that was, I think, kind of a revelation that it was like, oh, it, we're, like, you just want to be really good friends uh, on top of <laughs> on top of all the, the hormones and, and all the, the sweaty nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. Like you kind of you're very just happy just being in, in their company and just sharing things and just looking forward to hanging out. And cool. Yeah. If you have sex on top of that bonus, but like you don't need to and you're just quite happy kind of just just hanging out and yeah. just yeah and just really liking everything about that person and I think as well like when you have the stuff that like you know when they like have things that are kind of more negative in terms of like because you know shocker not everyone's perfect I mean I am but not everyone is sure, so that's a given you know um so but when you kind of like you don't mind those things you know it's like all right yeah you're like this but kind of funny though isn't it or like it's kind of cute or like that's just what makes you you or you know any of those things like even like the 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 kind of not so good personality traits or habits or whatever like it doesn't really matter so much to you because it's just part of what makes up that person and you know you understand the rough comes with the smooth as well and you know and that's okay because without those things they wouldn't maybe have this or they wouldn't have that and so you kind of that's I think that's for me is when you know that you love someone because you love them as a whole you don't pick and choose the bits that you love you love them you love everything you love even the bad stuff yeah that's another <laughs> kind of revelation I think that that you have as as you go through relationships and kind of understand the mechanics of them a little mm -hmm. bit better Mm -hmm. And they're all slightly different, but there's still a lot of commonalities. And and yeah, you're one of those things is just being like, oh, here's the thing that if I were, you know, Frankensteining the perfect mate for myself <laughs> in, here in the lib, I don't think that I would, uh, you know, include this particular element, but it kind of makes the person, you know, if yeah. not, if not charming, then it's just like, oh, this is a thing that I'm going to tease them about mercilessly. Yeah. You know, over <laughs> over the course of our life. Yeah, yeah. Um, and definitely bring up in like, you know, the wedding speech or like when we're hanging out with friends or <laughs> yeah. stuff like that to embarrass them. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like uh, my girlfriend now, who I do I absolutely love her, um, ter terrible blanket thief. Just <laughs> the worst. <laughs> and. But I, again, one of those things that I find kind of I find kind of funny because I don't I'm not particular about that necessarily. Yeah. But yeah, it's it it it's definitely a thing. Yeah, and Michael it, has way too many of those things on me. <laughs> like way too many. <laughs> um, but um, okay, like I have to kind of so like um, I fart a lot. <laughs> And uh, so he sure. always like he always um, takes the piss out of me 
and any time regardless of anything if there's a ba- even if I'm not even around and say we're on the phone and like I don't know he walks by a drain and he was just like oh are you around because I just not feeling really bad like you know, like <laughs> and uh, and I'm just like no dickhead like you know or like he or I'll like come out of the bathroom from like say brushing my teeth and then he'll say to our kid like oh um Ava don't go in there like you know you might you know you might pass out so I'm like Mike can you stop like it, I just brushed my teeth like it's not even that bad but like you know every now and then I'll fart and then so now he ha- he exaggerates to the point where like apparently all I am is a walking gas machine and it's like <laughs> it's like no shut up and also now like Ava starts Ava now starts going like, oh, mummy, stinky. And I'm like, I've done, I've done nothing. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't deserve this abuse. It's not that bad. Like, it's not to this level. But now you've just, like, brainwashed our child into into uh, calling me stinky mummy. So right. thanks for that. I, Cheers. That's not going to last. <laughs> I've just become the fog monster to our child. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Of course, he thinks it's the most hilarious thing. So he starts laughing. And then, of course, because she's three, she starts laughing. Uh-huh. And I'm just like, fuck you both. I'm going out. <laughs> you know, farts are never not funny. It's just a sad farts truth. I, I told the story on um, on Duncan's show, Jaws is Shite, but I'll tell it again because it's a quick one. Um, when me and Michael first started dating, we'd been together a few weeks. So, I mean, I do try to be a lady in, you know, the traditional sense of the word. Um, you know, at least for the first couple of months of dating someone like you know I wait until like I've got my hooks in them and then I let out the real me um and then they can't run anywhere because they're too invested by that point um and <laughs> they uh yeah so anyway so I I do try not to um let go of any kind of bodily functions in front of people like that and um so I've been really good about it and one time have I told the story on here already I, I don't think so. I need to start making track of stories that I've told. Um, anyways, so um, we were led, led in bed post-coitus. Um, and I'm like just talking. We're just talking. And all of a sudden, I just let one rip mid-conversation. And it's bad. And I'm trying to com- I'm trying to continue talking as though nothing's happened. And I can't. I can't do it. It's just it's it's so obvious and I'm so mortified and I've done the thing where I'm so embarrassed and I've gone blank and I can't finish my sentence and then I just I bury my head in my hands (laughs) out of embarrassment (laughs) and I'm completely mortified and I'm not looking at him and I'm like I'm sorry I'm so sorry I'm really sorry like it's so embarrassing oh my god this is the worst like I'm fucking dying right now this is terrible just world swallow me up you know and I sort of peek at him through my fingers and he's just there grinning and I'm just like what what's funny and he's just like Babe, you've been farting in your sleep for weeks. <laughs> oh, you know what? I, I do think you've told this story. Have I told this story already? Yeah, oh, I apologize. It's the punchline that got back. me. Eh, it's quick. Um, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, I'm, that's very funny though. Oh, honestly, I literally I fucking died. I don't I don't think it made it any better. He thought it was making it better. It wasn't it made it worse, but never mind. So after that, yeah. I was just like, well, you know, I guess now I can just be myself. <laughs> and he's regretted it ever since. <laughs> well, let's uh, let's begin talking about the movie. Now well, yeah. that we've, been, we've been at this for a while. But all right. So mm-hmm. Spring, um, it kicks off with our our lead as played by Lou Taylor Pucci, mm-hmm. uh, who I think is is really great in this movie. So good. Uh, playing a guy named Evan. And mm-hmm. Evan, uh, his his mother has just died. Yeah, it's such a sweet scene. Very sad. And fortunately, his buddy is Jeremy Gardner, which makes yes. me insanely jealous. Yeah, I just want to be his friend. I want to go drinking with him. Absolutely. In such a big bad way. And as they're kind of commiserating after the funeral, like Jeremy Gardner and, and Evan are chit-chatting, and Evan overhears a you know, a fight between uh, a guy and his lady. Mm -hmm. And Evan gets in the middle of it and is like, hey, you know, you need to back off this lady. And the dude ends up 
you know, basically throwing a, a punch. And then Evan beats the ever living fuck out of this dude. Yeah, he thinks that he's he thinks that Evan's following his missus into the bathroom, like he's gonna try and crack on with his missus. And Evan bless him is just trying to go take a piss. And then um he, he starts on him and and Jeremy Gardner's character, um, he's bless him, he's trying every single kind of like mode in the like method in the in the book to try and calm this di- guy down. It's like, come sit with me, have a drink. Like, you know, he's fine. Let him go. Like, come and have a drink with me. Come and have a smoke. And um, and then he, he's about to, but then Evan sees the the guy, the the thug guy, grab a bottle to go and bottle Jeremy Gardner, which in anyone's book should be a big fucking no no because. Mm-hmm. Jeremy Gardner was pure and we need to protect him at all costs. Absolutely. So to quote the internet. So um yeah, so uh, yeah and then yeah, fucking out of fucking nowhere Evan just loses his shit on him. I mean, he was an arsehole. But he is like, but it, right, it's all the rage and depression and anger mm-hmm. and like all that stuff that's building up inside Evan. Yeah. And, and he loses four just, teeth and like his yeah. gold teeth plate flies across the fucking floor and shit. And so this causes because they're drinking at the place where they work this mm-hmm. causes Evan to be fired yeah and as they're going home like Jeremy Gardner tells him like man you just need to call up a lady and get laid just yeah. get like that's where your aggression needs to go <laughs> he goes he <laughs> he goes um He's like, oh, I don't know. It's just like, you know, on sympathy fucks. He's like, your mum just died. You only get to use that once. <laughs> yeah. Like, great line. <laughs> and he's he's such a funny character. I mean, he's crass to be sure, but he's very funny in this movie. He's and the short, kind of friend you want in that moment. Oh, yes. A hundred percent. And I love that moment that, that you were talking about when the, the you know, kind of guy in the bar uh, who's getting almost violent yeah when when he's like hey give me a cigarette and evan says like i don't have a cigarette and that's where jeremy gardner step, steps in and is like you want a cigarette i got a cigarette come have a cigarette come have let a me cig- buy you a drink you know yeah oh he's so good it's like killing with kindness because right. you only get an irate you get an irate with a guy like that he's only going to get irate back if you kind of like pacify the guy with you know whatever it, he's going to want then he's going to chill out and be like all right you know it's just that's how you have to deal with people like that yeah um yeah and again like you said you you just need that kind of friend in your life that's like Mm -hmm. hey i'm you're at your lowest point i'm gonna make sure that you don't have a shitty night on top of a shitty day yeah although (laughs) because the guy comes by the guy who beats up comes by with his buddies and they like what i can't remember what they do they 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 yell out something and i think don't they like they say they know where he lives yeah they know where he lives and something yeah and then so uh, Jeremy Gardner says oh um, do you want me to stay and he's like have you got a spare bed and he's just like I've got my mum's and he's just like dude I love you but I'm not sleeping in your mother's deathbed <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> he's like I'm off I'll see you later I'll call you in the morning to make sure you're not dead <laughs> kind of thing. Like, go get a sympathy fuck <laughs> yeah and he does and, and, and he does he calls Such up hard uh, work. yeah he calls a girl up gets gets her to come over they end up uh, having, having some of the sex but the next day, um, it's just kind of this awkward, you know, like, hey, well, what are you doing? Where are you, what are you doing today? Well, I don't know. What are you doing today? And yeah. I mean, it's just this total, like, yeah, they, they had this one night fleeing. I'm sure they've done it before. Yeah. But it's very clear that he does not have any deep feelings towards her oh and she doesn't either like she's such hard work and she's so blase i want to i want to reiterate the hard work is not from her asking him to use a condom um but like just in terms of like he's like she's trying to i think she listen she asking like questions like he's trying to just like get his happy on and she's just like keeps asking him questions and stuff and then like at one point she's like oh no i'm too sober to sleep with you now and like yeah and then yeah it's I mean, just it's it's so fucking awkward and there's absolutely no connection like no chemistry whatsoever it's just oh there yeah there's a point where she says she's too drunk to answer deep questions that he has and yeah, then that's says, it. Yeah, nah. he's asking her questions and stuff. Right. And then she says, now nah, I'm too sober to do this. Yeah, but and... too drunk to do the other thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so she ends up just kind of taking off the next morning. And it, it's a, mm-hmm. again, very 
a, a very unsatisfying evening spent for Evan. Yeah, he did not get what he needed from that night. No. And then the cops come and knock on his door. Yeah. Uh, because of the, the fight the night before. And mm-hmm. he's just hung over, laying in bed. He kind of waits him out. They just knock on the door and eventually leave. Yeah. And that's the point where he decides, like, I gotta get I gotta get the fuck out of Dodge. Like yeah. this is everything here is kind of crap. Everything's confusing. I've just lost my job. I got a little money that my mom left me. Yeah, my hand hurts real bad. <laughs> yeah. And also he's he's just found his passport and he sort of reminisces, doesn't he, with the girl and he sort of, well not with the girl, but he sort of reminisces to remin- reminisces to her. Um, that him and his dad were going to, he got the passport because him and his dad were going to go and take a trip to Italy, but then they never did before he died. Um, and yeah, and so he just sort of gets this inspiration, like, fuck, I'm going to go off and do something. Because it's partly that and partly because Jeremy Gardner's is like, dude, just fucking go and do shit and sort yourself yeah. out kind of thing. Go get, take it, was, go take a breath, go take a breather, go do something and get clear your mind and, you know, and all the rest and sort of go find yourself essentially because he's a bit of a he's sort of a bit of a bum he refers to himself as a bum and it's not because he's a bad guy or anything like that but he just sort of doesn't have a lot of direction he spent so long looking after his mum. he doesn't really have he used to be a chef and all of this and he doesn't really have anything of his own anymore and so yeah so Jeremy Guy's like fuck it just go and and do something with yourself for a bit so he does he goes off and he just picks a random flight to Italy yeah and not when bad place get, to end up. Not at all. And when he gets there, pretty much right away, things kind of start to turn around. Like he he falls in with uh, some locals <laughs> and are <laughs> are some uh, fellow some travelers. English. Yeah, yeah, some English guys who are. It, it's, I've written here. Oh my god, this is exactly English lad culture. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> like, it's just drinking, smoking dope. It's they are literally like every single lad in England. Like that's not an exaggeration. That level of swearing is not this for put on for effect. That is literally how people talk here. It's yeah. It was so funny to see. <laughs> yeah, and he just kind of falls in with them. Like they end up taking a road trip. Yeah, uh, sort of taking to under town. their wing. And yeah. they 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 jip him out because like he can't keep up with them drinking and he's they're like oh you've only drunk five of those and he's like I thought that was pretty good they're like no <laughs> and I was just like you've only drunk five pints and you're drinking with the likes of them now nah, that's fucking shit yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> they'll be on ten pints easy <laughs> yeah, this is gonna get dangerous for you kid <laughs> yeah like you are far too skinny to be trying to keep up with these guys. And there's that bit later in it where they're like, oh, yeah, he wakes up really hungover. And they're like, oh, yeah, but you were keeping up. And he was like, was I? And they're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's great. Um, yeah, these guys are really fucking obnoxious, but they are, they're, they're, they're likable, though. Yeah, they're, they're on the right side of being hooligans, you know? Yeah. They're, they're out to have a good time. They're not looking to hurt anybody. They're just kind of loud and brash and mm-hmm. drunk. Yeah, and, yeah, but they're not trying to, you know, start any shit with anybody. They're no, just they're not antagonistic or anything. They're just out for a good time and fuck it. Yeah, yeah. And when they go to this new town, this is where Evan gets his uh, first encounter with Louise, mm-hmm. and uh, who is is uh, played by. Let me get the actress's name, uh, Nadia Hilker. Yeah, she's been in a few things. Yeah, big on Walking Dead recently, mm-hmm. I think. It's and an, Yeah, anyway. 100 and stuff. Yeah. So she's definitely been around uh, in in different entertainment venues. But, uh, this is she's, one of her earlier roles, I think. I think so. She's so good in it. Like, she's that she perfect is. mix of she's exotic, but not, you know. Complete. She's magnetic. Like, yeah. I cannot take my eyes off her. Like, apart from the fact that she's gorgeous, like, there is just something, like, she does this, I mean, considering who she ends up being, like, she does, like, you feel like she has a lifetime worth of experience and knowledge and stuff. And when she says, I can speak, like, 10 languages and list them all, and some of them are even dead languages, you're like, yeah, I buy that, you know, Mm -hmm. like, 
like I don't know how that works in terms of math and how long how young you look but sure I buy that you could speak all of those languages and you could probably do it very well you know like um she just has this enigmatic but like quality that is just so attractive and just it really just draws you in and um she kind of reminds me a little but I kind of got um I don't know if if you'll agree with me or or what but like a kind of um like a more exotic kind of Imogen Poots vibe oh sure yeah I can I, I can totally see that right for sure yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like yeah she, and, and Imogen Poots is someone who I'm just like I like she just mesmerizes me and I don't even know why I don't know if it's the eyes or but um but yeah she it, the, Nadia in this is is just absolute perfect casting like she's amazing yeah. I kind of definitely fancy her a lot <laughs> yeah sure yeah I, I, <laughs> you know and you're right. Like she is the perfect blend of obviously she's drop dead gorgeous, mm. but there is also this kind of sophistication mm -hmm. and, and intelligence about her yeah. that like, so when Evan starts talking to her, you know, it's a little ham fisted at first, but she's not completely shutting him down. And then he sees her the next night with his hooligan buddies and this is the point where they're like, hey, go say something to her, you know? <laughs> and so he does. And um, she, again, kind of finds him, you know, charming, maybe a little wounded. But they they have a good kind of back and forth, a, a nice rapport. Yeah. You can kind of see Evan g coming to life a little bit. Yeah, there's this beautiful shot because they have this really lovely kind of like... Um tracking shot through the italian town square of this town that they're in and they pass these old guys you know you always get the old men sat out in on the coffee tables in the sun and stuff and playing chess or whatever and um and we're following evan and his and his british mates and then and they're kind of overcast in this shadow and then he sees her woman in the red dress little matrix story back for you mm -hmm. um yeah and uh, she's just sat on the bench or whatever and she's in this summer red summer dress with um like heels and stuff and she's just looking suitably beautifully exotic and um and he walks by and they catch each other's eye and he kind of turns back and as he's sort of maintaining eye contact with her he steps into the light into the sunlight and he's just like bathed in the sunlight while he's sort of like un under her spell so to speak mm -hmm. and then when they have when he actually does go and talk to her later on like and they have this rapport and stuff like yeah like you can see that for him at least like he's he is definitely he's not thinking like yeah I want to bang that like he's thinking like I want to get to know you you know like and he she she's kind of like I want to bang that like because she's like let's get out of here and he's just like whoa I want can we can we have some drinks first can I like take you out to dinner tomorrow like you know and she's just like no <laughs> what do you want from me like just let you're gonna come or not and he's kind of like no <laughs> um and she just sort of walks off <laughs> like, yeah he he slow plays it uh and in a way that makes sense for him because he's just you know had this one night stand kind of thing that was completely unsatisfying and mm. here's this woman that he's genuinely interested in yeah and it's like let's I don't know. Let's play this a little cool and see where it goes and not just rush to conjugate the verb and then never see each other again. Yeah. Yeah. And so when his English buddies are like, Hey, we're about to take off to the next town. Evan stays behind because he wants to, he wants to see uh, Louise again. Yeah. And they're just off. It's the quickest exit ever. Like, there's no like they've spent the last couple of days together and like been chatting and this one guy has apparently opened up to him about his ex and stuff and all of this and he's just like no I'm gonna stay he's like all right then bye yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so quick I was like all right then I guess you're off then <laughs> all right see you later um but yeah and then so they're kind of out of the picture they're just sort of like I guess the the means to get to where we're going they enable him to get to where he needs to be I suppose like yeah it she ends up, or he ends up going to um, find a job in mm -hmm. town because he decides he's going to stay for a little bit. Yeah. And falls in with this terrific guy named Angelo. Love him. Who, uh, you know, runs a farm. Yeah. 
and it, he's higher. It like Angelo doesn't really speak English. Uh, Evan doesn't really speak Italian. Yeah, but they kind of make it work. And I love that that friendship. It's really wonderful. It's a very again kind of the relationship that he needs. This mm -hmm. sort of father figure mm -hmm. who is. You know, not only hiring him to work on the farm, but giving him all these kind of life lessons. And yeah, and it, a room to stay as well. Yeah. And it's fun to see like Evan through the movie learning kind of broken Italian to get mm -hmm. by. And uh, it, it's a, a really, uh, again, I, I like just about every corner of this movie and this relationship between the two of them, I think is is really wonderful. It's really lovely. And I think it's nice as well because like it's, because he needs these moments away from Louise um, because it makes sense for the plot. And it's like, you know, it instead of having these moments where he's just sort of moping through Italy, like, you know, missing her or whatever, or just being a bit you know sad because of recent events in his life and things like we get these lovely little pockets of kind of like little joy pockets um, between him and Angelo, because Angelo is just like, I want him to be my granddad. Yeah. And like, <laughs> you know, he is just and he comes up with really funny stuff as well. Like, you know, when they first meet and things and he's saying, oh, you know, like um, Evan's saying, oh, I like this girl and stuff. And then he he notices a picture of his wife and he says, oh, is this your wife? And he, she's he, the guy explains like that his wife has passed away. Um, and he says, women, Jews of the world. <laughs> and Evan, rightly so, is like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. he's just like Jews of the world and he pulls out a, like a pendant that he has underneath his shirt and he's like oh jewels of the world <laughs> he's like yes Jews of the world <laughs> it's this really thick Italian accent and um and it's just these little moments where like you have all of this kind of very intense romance stuff going on and then later on you have like proper bouts of like horror um and then but in amongst all of that you have this really tender like as you say very kind of paternal and like son relationship developing and this lovely little rapport and it has these little pockets of humor in it which just really offset everything so nicely and are very natural um and you can really see how these two characters even though they have absolutely nothing in common could really like come together and and have this lovely little friendship going on it's really sweet yeah and angelo is a guy who is very much of a place like this is mm -hmm. his farm this is where he lives he's lived there for decades mm -hmm. and and tended this land and you know evan is kind of without any mooring you know and being able to land in this place that is so like firm and and Stable. gives him yeah it, it, yes absolutely gives him the stability to kind of pursue this relationship with louise which he he does they end up you know, going out to dinner and um, he he finds out that like, oh, the the first one is the, the museum where they go to the museum uh, for the first time. And he Louise says that she's an art student. And, you know, it's a lot more kind of chit chatting and admiring art. It's a great date. Good I Lord. love art gallery dates. Yeah. Um, and. It, then afterwards they go to dinner and they're, you know, continuing the vibe. They're chit-chatting some more mm -hmm. and um, they start to get into like, well, you know, where are you from? And she's like, oh, I've been all over the world. Mm. And he's like, okay, well, you know, if you've been everywhere, like how, how many people have you been with? And she's like, I don't know if you really want to know the answer to that. <laughs> But she also says, like, I just, like, relationships aren't for me. I can't, I, I can't settle down for too long. And, and they, they talk about religion, you know, again, kind of early date sort of stuff where you talk about these big, heady topics. And she's like, I don't know if I believe in God. You'll find out why later. But I'm yeah. not, it's not really something that I, uh, I, I cotton to too much. And, when he starts pressing her about like, you know, what, who have you been in love? How many times have you been in love? Who, who, who were you in love with and what did they do? Uh, she says, well, there was one guy that would write love letters to me. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and Evan says, all right, I can write you a love letter. Yeah. And, and does, it's not, 
great. And even she kind of gives him some shit about it. Yeah. But, it's really cute. Yeah, but also it is, again, very charming. It's like him making these overtures and, and she teases him about it. But, like, it's clear, you know, there's something kind of growing between them. Mm-hmm. And they eventually end up getting a little tipsy. They uh, go back to his apartment. Is it his or uh, is it hers? I I thought it was hers because he lives over at the farm and it's... I thought it was his because she leaves. I thought he just, she just leaves him. Maybe so. But oh, all right, remember. so they go to... Uh, maybe it is her a apartment. A apartment. <laughs> an apartment. Uh, un apartamente. Mm-hmm. And... Um, in a reverse of the earlier scene, he like takes out a condom. Yeah. And she just smacks it out of his hand. She's like, fuck that. We're getting down. Yep. And unfortunately the next morning though, uh, after, after they have some <laughs> tremendous date sex. Yeah. Uh, she wakes up and is, uh, turning into a hideous she creature. Yeah. Yeah. And so she runs home, and this is the the scene that I'm, I kind of mentioned earlier on, where she runs into this alleyway as this kind of weird, like super thin witch thing. Yeah, this is oh well, yeah, it was just before because this is the bit that I mentioned. But yeah, that bit's just for I thought you meant the bit in the alleyway with the other person. Should we say? No, no, no. The, this That's what is I thought you meant. Yeah, no. This is I think it's all part and part of the same scene. The, the bit that I said and the bit you meant. Yeah, and so she ends up eating a cat on her way. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 that's right. Yes, yes. And Sorry. she eventually gets home to take or gets to her bag or whatever and gives herself this injection, which gets her back to normal. And so this is the point in the movie where now the audience knows <laughs> that Louise is not exactly what she seems, and uh, Evan is unaware of this. Mm-hmm. You know, he's just, he's falling in love, you know? He's, like, completely down for it. The, there's, um, this is where they're having the conversation about, like, hey, do you speak other languages? And she's like, yeah, I speak about ten. <laughs> but she says first off I don't know she goes how yeah I do and he goes oh how many and she's just like I don't know and he's like how do you not know how many languages and then she starts listing them off and there's like 10 of them it's insane yeah. and then he's just like oh what not like Slovakia and she was just like no do you speak that and he's like no <laughs> and it's yeah it's oh it's so good and there so there's a point where she is gonna go upstairs and take a shower and while uh, she's in the shower, um, she start to, starts to transform and he kind of understands something is going on in the bathroom. But she injects herself and gets back to normal. So when he later investigates, he sees a syringe on the floor. Yeah. And believes that, well, maybe, <laughs> like, as you would, you would not immediately leap to... <laughs> oh, I bet she is a monster that needs these <laughs> stem cells to prevent yeah. herself from turning into this horrible creature. He's like, oh, she's on the gank. Yeah. I mean, my first thought might be diabetic, but sure. Well, and she, like, her behavior is a little strange. It's erratic as well, isn't it? So, yeah. Yeah. So he's like, all right, well, she's kind of hiding something from me but ultimately he kind of makes note of the syringe and then um they're like hey let's go to the beach uh later on and you know we're gonna have a a a date there and uh there's a moment where going back to the farm where angelo is uh is saying hey there's this growth in the in the leaves of the trees mm, right, right. and yeah and angelo says well that's spring you know that's when things change everything transforms in spring in his <laughs> broken italian yeah our broken english uh, is italian it's fine and uh and that you know spring is what is what causes all these strange and wonderful things to happen even in uh in these trees you know, yes. it's what something growing in the orange tree. It's uh, a different fruit or something. Mm-hmm. 
then when they Evan later goes to meet with Louise, um, he he brings up the syringe because you know again she's acting a little bit flaky, and he's like, "What's going on with you?" Because I found you know I saw this needle on the floor. Are you on the clean burden propane? And <laughs> <laughs> and she I'll says, "I'll never get bored of that." <laughs> And she says, no, 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 I've, I've got a medical condition yeah. and I have to give myself injections every now and again. And so she, to get off the subject, she starts asking him about his family and he mm. kind of shuts down. Yeah. He's like, I don't want to talk about this. And she's like, well, that's fucked up because I tell you all this stuff about me and I don't know anything about you. Yeah. And the second I ask about your family, you, you cut me off. So... If if you want to have a, an actual relationship, that means you have to actually discuss things with me. Yeah, and she goes off and walks down to the. She leaves him at the table and walks off down the beach, and then, oh no, he does that. No, he walks off, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and, she goes and follows him. That's right. And then she says, "Yeah," because he finally he does finally confess. Like, well, my mother just died of cancer last week. Yeah, and, <laughs> she's like, "Oh shit, <laughs> okay." Right, and. He he describes himself as a sociopath or like a sociopath where he's like, I don't like I haven't done anything with my life. Um, I you know, I don't know what I'm going to be when I grow up, essentially, like it, my family's all gone. And <laughs> there's a great moment where Louise is like, you know, that's the, the same story as Batman. Yeah, she's got the same fat story as Batman. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, all right, well, that's kind of funny. And yeah. uh, he also is asking her about her contacts. And she's like, no, 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 I, I, they're not because I can't see. It's to hide the fact that they're, uh, what are they, uh, uh, heterochromic? Is that oh, the word? I, 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 don't, I, I don't think I'd know at midday, let alone midnight. So <laughs> yeah, um, but... she has one eye, one color. My, uh, Michael, my partner, has that. Yeah, it's it's kind of cool, and you know where she hides it. This is, uh, you know, following the theme of the movie. Evan is just like, oh no, I like this. Yeah, I think this is really cool. And he says she has beautiful eyes, and then she's all like, wow, that's not, like very original. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and <laughs> he's just uh, constantly ripping him. I love it. He also he's like, are you know, are you telling me the truth about yourself because? There's, you know, a lot of the stuff that you say, it just seems a little unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And she's like, no, 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 I've never lied to you, never once. And uh, so anyway, after this date, she ends up going back to this sea cave to do this crazy ritual. Mm -hmm. because, yeah, this is the bit I was on about. Yeah, she is trying to essentially um counteract all these transformations and you know we'll get to the why here in a second but um so to do that she kind of uses like some old you know probably third century bc kind of shit to see if that will work uh including you know killing her rabbits yeah but when evan goes to find her later she's not feeling well she's completely blown out she's completely exhausted he um, takes care of her yeah and like he props her up on a pillow and gives her a blanket and he's like i heard i read this is what you do to, when your girl is unwell and it's so sweet mm -hmm. oh he's such a puppet <laughs> and um uh, <laughs> she ends up like feeling good enough to like go out to dinner with him but while they're out at dinner, she starts to transform again and has to take off. Yeah. And this is the point you were talking about earlier where she runs away from him down an alleyway. Mm -hmm. And there's this dude who comes Frick. up behind her. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, unquestionably, but he gets his in pretty short order. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to say it's not deserved either. Absolutely not. Because... He thinks that she's just drunk. Yeah, and he goes and tries and sleeps with her, like, basically goes to stick his cock up her ass. Yeah. With, with, like, from behind her when he, she's clearly unresponsive. And the only reason he stops is because he lifts up her skirt and her ass has basically fallen away. Because <laughs> it's like, 
her skin has started getting all like well falling away doesn't it it's all kind of like comes all sticky and you know what, how much what am I trying to explain here Bo it's kind of like the it's like if you were to pull your skin away and you'd have like all of the kind of you know like in the fly where it has all mm-hmm. of that gunk and it's mm-hmm. all bubbling and mussels and stuff yeah and it looks like a real bad fuck off burn that hasn't healed and it's still sticky it's like that and black and gooey. Yeah. and so he lifts up a skirt and sees that and um before he can freak out and run away what happens Bo? uh she eats him she does she eats him good and i was not sorry to see yeah unfortunately though this is not a uh a crime without a witness mm-hmm. uh it turns out angelo see something going on like it's she, actually, it's an old woman isn't it i i thought it was angelo but i could be wrong about that no it's an Maybe. old it's an old woman because then later on we see her giving a witness statement to the oh office. you're right you're right totally mm-hmm. right and uh but um speaking of angelo the next day while evan is working angelo tells him like hey you're working here as an illegal immigrant yeah and you know the harvest is almost done and eventually the immigration services are going to find you. Uh, so you're going to have to leave here eventually and sooner rather than later. And so, you know, Evan goes to Louise to basically tell her like, I'm, you know, maybe I sh- can come stay with you for a little bit or something, or I need to hit the road or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, when he he finds her, um, is this the point where he sees her for realsies for the first time? No, so she breaks up with him. That's right. She's he opens the, he she opens the door and she's oh, she's looking worse for wear, um, and she's all like, oh well, um, I don't you know I, I don't think I can really see you tonight. And then she clocks the policeman sort of patrolling and she's like, well, I guess if you really want to come in, come in. Um, obviously just to get him off her porch and get the door shut. Um, and and then she basically says like, look, I don't know what you want from me, but this isn't really going to work out and I can't do this. And this is really just, yeah, I'm sorry for leading you on and I'm really sorry for, you know, hurting you and stuff, but this is it and um and he's just like what this is like coming from nowhere she's like yeah it all got really intense really fast and I'm just I can't do this I'm I can't do relationships and kind of reiterates what she said earlier and he's just like look if you if you're telling me that you don't feel anything for me then I'll go but I can't really believe that you don't and she basically says I don't and you know so he takes his stuff off and and leaves and then he uh he I can't remember which way around it is I think like uh yeah so yeah so he then he then goes to Angelo and then he says right I'm probably I'm probably going to head off like she's dumped me I've got girl problems you know um Donna problems <laughs> and um and then all of a sudden we have the police come up like sort of starting to approach the farm and uh Angelo is just like um oh that's immigration and and it's kind of a bit of a funny thing because it's um because then evan goes well emma um what immigration as in police immigration he's just like see it's like should i run see yeah. <laughs> and he just he bolts across the field and just runs and he ends up at this bar where on so he's been dumped he's lost his job and he's got the police after him and he's at this bar where on tv it's got images of weddings and then in the corner of the bar he's got this couple making out and just completely rubbing it in his face that he's just been dumped and um and he's just sat at this bar drinking this beer and (laughs) and he's just you know he's doing the whole thing of like you know letting off your troubles to the barman and he turns around he's just like you know back home i you know i I, I was the police were after me and before that like I lost my job and before that like um I lost my my uh, parents and then I come here and you know I lose my job and I lose my girl and the police are after me so it's just like it's out of the frying pan and into the fire and then he just sort of like has this moment where he just sort of goes fuck it I'm gonna go and sort this out and um 
and he and there's this really great moment where we see the barman just sort of look at him just like the fuck right <laughs> he's just like the police are after me and everyone and i've lost everything and the police are after me here and he's like what and then and then that's when he goes he goes back to um louise's and opens the door and um yeah this is when i put down my toast <laughs> yeah she is just on the floor like the thing oh there's yeah. tentacles and legs and all kinds uh-huh. of shit coming out of her yeah it's straight out of carpenter straight out of lovecraft everything all the stuff yeah it's it's great and he mm-hmm. gives her uh this injection which yeah. gets her back to normal <laughs> and there's a great moment where he's like what the fuck are you like are you a werewolf are you a vampire he runs through it all doesn't he like you're a werewolf are you a vampire are you a zombie are you an alien like he's running off all the pop culture hits you know (laughs) yeah and she's just like i'm a human (laughs) like don't be so offensive (laughs) but he understandably so is like this is a bit much i'm leaving yeah yeah i can't imagine many people sticking around so (laughs) well but she chases after him and she's like well you know now that you've seen this let me explain yeah yeah and it turns out that she is not immortal but has been alive for thousands of years Mm -hmm. and that the reason that she didn't want him to use a condom is that Mm -hmm. she needs to get pregnant because at the you know, uh, the spring equinox, she will essentially be reborn into a new life. Yeah. He's like, well, is there any way to stop it? And he, and, she, and she's like, well, no. I mean, I, I have to really, truly, honestly be in love with someone, but that has never happened. Yeah. And, but yeah, if I were in that state. can control. Right. Yeah. That her body would produce a chemical that would stop the transformation process and, and it would break the cycle, essentially. She would just live a normal human life. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he asks her, like, hey, well, would you give up immortality for me? And she's like, no. Are you, yeah. what? <laughs> I've like, known you five done, days. <laughs> right. Yeah. We, we don't, how long have we known? Like, we've, I can count the number of times we fucked on one hand. <laughs> so uh, he feels upset about this. So he I mean... takes <laughs> yeah it's so funny because i get why he's upset but also no dude it's kind of like um it's kind of a recall back to when jeremy garner goes dude i love you but i'm not sleeping your mother's deathbed and she's like dude i like you but i'm not giving up eternity for you like yeah um like evan you're a good guy but only so far yeah (laughs) like every time (laughs) well he he tries to call jeremy gardner to get some advice (laughs) jeremy gardner's like smoked a bowl yeah (laughs) And that's not that and he tell and he doesn't even sugarcoat he flat out tells him everything he's just like yeah so i've like met this girl but she's kind of a monster and like she got pregnant and i don't really know what she's going to do with it because if she keeps it then it means that the stem cells are going to like she's going to give birth to herself and like and he's just like dude i just fucking smoked a bowl this is too much <laughs> right i can't deal with this call me back later <laughs> just, when i'm not high as fuck and maybe yeah. we can sort through this <laughs> yeah there is a lot going on on your end and i'm just at the moment trying to see through the smoke and i can't deal with your shit <laughs> right right now like making myself a bowl of cereal is a challenge and, <laughs> yeah. and what you've got happening is way beyond that yeah and you're in a fucking different time zone a whole fucking different continent that is a you problem okay <laughs> yeah yeah so, <laughs> so evan that decides that he's gonna go back to louise and and convince her like you love me or at the very least i love you and let me see this through yeah because if and, i don't i'll regret it right i i gotta know and yeah. so he says like this is your last day because you know bumping up against the spring equinox mm-hmm. and so this is your last day why don't we just go somewhere together and we'll see what happens yeah it's going a road trip road trip yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not that vibe at all but <laughs> yeah and at first she's like, look, there's nothing you can do to change this. There's no point in it. And then some police show up and she's like, you know what? Let's get out of town. Yeah, why not? Sure. Seems nice. <laughs> and yeah. so they drive to Pompeii is where they they end up going. And 
uh, they drive all night. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she is pretty consistently having to inject herself because the transformations are kind of coming fast and furious. Yeah. You know, as well, like it was uh, kind of reminding me, I don't know if this is like a a purposely done thing, but uh, it's almost like contractions. Uh, where they yeah. come on quicker and faster and you have to have like if you if you're on um fuck what's that beautiful drug called when you have an epidural mm. um <laughs> beautiful drug oh my god it's so good <laughs> um <laughs> but yeah anyways um yeah like you have to kind of i mean it depends i had to a button to press every time it got too much because i okay i feel like before everyone starts calling me a pussy i was induced and if you're in, induced for more than five hours, you have to have an epidural. Um, so, like, otherwise it's too much. And actually, I ended up not getting one for way, too, way, way, way too late for other reasons, which I won't go into now. Um, but anyway, so I had a button to press every time it got too much. And um, and I would have to press that button a lot more quickly and a lot more, like, yeah. just So it kind of reminded me of that, like, in terms of... And it makes sense because, obviously, she's getting ready to birth herself. And yeah, it was just sort of like um, a comparison that came to mind when I was watching. I was like, oh, yeah, been there. Not really, but kind of. We, right. You <laughs> haven't transformed into a I'm, monster, but. No, yeah. I've not given birth to myself. Well, I mean, I don't know. Actually, my kid is very much like me, but I haven't taken on the DNA of Michael, though. So I guess it's not quite the same. Nah, not exact. Close. Close. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, we could so... me and her, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, sure. Sure, you know, uh, yeah. but you have to always throw in those like asterisks of like, well, okay, it's not as difficult. No, but and also I have a problem with anyone that would give anyone shit for taking drugs to stave off the pain of childbirth. Yeah, birthing a human between your vagina after it's split apart by ten centimeters. Yeah, yeah. That's not even the, the worst bit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look at the the high percentage of people who shit themselves in the process of that. Oh uh, yeah, all right. Let's not get too personal. Uh, well, I'm not talking about you personally. I'm saying, <laughs> I'm saying statistically, <laughs> it, happens. it happens a lot. And then I don't know how it doesn't happen. The way that you push, you have to right. No one ever talks about this, and I'm going to talk. I'm just going to shed a little bit of light on this, okay? Please. Because no one fucking talks about it. So the way that you push, right? it's like when you push to have a shit and you that's how you have to push you have to push through your ass and so this is why i think usually if it's a natural birth i.e you're not induced um and it's not or it's not a cesarean or anything it's like you know usually you will have a massive diarrhea type like shit before you go into kind of active what they call active labor and i swear to god it's so that you don't shit as you and potentially infect the baby because if you think about way back then when before we had like antiseptic and sterilization and you know all the stuff to keep us clean um and you know a, a million midwives and whatever around you um it's to yeah so like there's obviously potential for infection and stuff if you get shit on your baby who's <laughs> just like not got a, an immune system whatsoever <laughs> <Yeah>. um <laughs> but like because i was induced i it wasn't a, a natural birth so to speak because it was it was forced essentially um and so <laughs> i had eaten in the last 24 hours and um yeah and like so oh my god I just realized I've just spoken about my ass so much and not in a good way either um this episode so um <laughs> so yeah so anyway so you're pushing through your ass there's no way that you're not gonna shit and like um yeah I'm not gonna reveal that much about myself honestly sure. actually not everyone needs to know that <laughs> um what I was just gonna say then but um yeah let's just say Michael stayed up top end um yeah. <laughs> but yeah so like it's but it's yeah it's like really common because like unless you have nothing in your intestines i don't understand how you can't when you're putting that much pressure on your ass <sighs> it's really i agree like, not right. I agree. like <laughs> oh, child, yeah childbirth is a miracle yes it's also <laughs> this painful disgusting process it's so fucking disgusting <laughs> so you know it, again if if Taking a, a, a sedative or the epidural cuts down on the pain and or disgustingness of the event, then yeah. do it. 
Like that's why we, that's why we live in modern times, so we mm-hmm. can do that kind of stuff. Yeah, and we don't have such high rate of death during childbirth. Yeah, as it, well. Yeah, man, which I'm people, grateful for. I'll I'll tell you who gets all high and mighty about uh, natural childbirth and drug free free childbirth and stuff like that. It's just like people whose hobby it is to have children. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i just yeah i i i just i just think like you know in that moment just do what you gotta do i had this whole thing yeah. planned out i was gonna have a water birth i was gonna have like so i, I don't know what you guys have because obviously as well we have the beautiful thing of the nhs so i get all this shit free so like not to rub it in but um yeah, so I was going to have, like, a nice water, like, hydro pool. I was going to have, like, a massage. I was going to have, like, LED candles, because you can't have real candles. Little tea light candles with low lighting. I was going to have this whole scene. They they give you these, like, big, um, you know, there's, like, those fucking, those, like, the, the fucking screens around you where you can get different sceneries on the screen. So I was going to have a lovely forest on mine. I was going to have, like, all of this shit, right? But because I was induced, I couldn't have hardly any of that shit because you can't go into a pool because you can't have an epidural if you're in a pool because we can't be paralyzed in water. Um, and, you know, so all of that. And so and you ha- and also it's why you can't be like in with a whole load of electronics on you because you have to have like a, a pulse machine and everything all attached to you to make sure that you're OK in case anything happens with the epidural and stuff. And like so you can't have all of that if you're in water. So. I wasn't allowed in the hydro pool and I and then in the room I had they didn't have the screens and stuff so the only thing that I had was my chill out playlist and um, some low lighting and my LED candles um, and that was it and every, every single bit else of my birth plan just went out the window um, because of the circumstances so I just feel like people who are kind of going like oh yeah I want to have a natural birth 100% you go and, and do what you can but also be prepared that that's not going to happen and you might have to have some drugs and you might be in a position where the option to not have drugs is not available to you like you know and that's like a situation that you're gonna have to be prepared for because that could happen because that's what happened to me and um and anyone who kind of like gets on their high horse about like natural births and stuff it's just like (sighs) until you go through a position where you don't where you don't have that choice i would (laughs) It's like the old uh, military expression about all childbirth uh, planning uh, is great until it meets first contact with the baby. (laughs) Yeah, that baby got other plans. Yeah. Um, Yeah, for sure. Or like if the or if the kids like, you know, what's the fucking word when they're like round the wrong way and shit? Uh, is it breach? So yeah, it that's the word. When they're breached again, it's like two in AM. <laughs> my brain, my brain ain't working so good. Um, but yeah, so like anything can happen or whatever. But like, yeah. But then like a, a friend of mine, she had her perfect, perfectly planned birth, and it was amazing. And she only needed gas and air, and she was in her water pool and everything, and she had like the deep breathing and all of this, and it was great for her. But her her labor only lasted about four hours whereas mine was 24 hours so you know it's all different stuffs but um yeah i feel like though i feel like louise does have it harder though sure well you have to kind of give birth to yourself and certainly no epidurals involved with that but no and she has to do it like what once every 20 years for like and she's been doing it for two thousand years yeah oh, that's gonna suck yeah and I get 200 so, times or something stupid. Oh, oh, oh my god, I just thought of going through fucking labor 200 times. Oh, no thanks. Yeah, Louise, you win this one <laughs> just for, for quantity, if nothing else. Yeah, yeah, even if it was a lovely water birth every fucking time. Nah, I'm all right. Cheers. And so the next morning, <laughs> they get to Pompeii. Mm hmm. And there's this great scene where they're kind of walking through the ruins of Pompeii. And she's like, oh, yeah, this is where I grew up. There's, you know, that used to be uh, a little store. And here's me. Yeah. And here's my house. (laughs) Yeah. Sure enough, there are my parents. Yep. 
and you know frozen forever and stone and um you know yeah also kind of cool her accent changes in this scene yeah i noticed that as well like time she sounded english and time she sounded a bit german and yeah it's like you know as she's talking about her family like she almost kind of reverts back to Mm. whatever that accent was and yeah because he makes mention of her accent she's he's just like i can't place your accent and stuff and then she lists all the places that she's been to um like that's why her accent's a bit multi-regional and stuff mm-hmm. um which again is not not true it's just you know she's had two thousand years to kind of lose her original accent <laughs> yeah but yeah, it does kind of something. I don't. I couldn't really pick up what it was. I was picking up a lot of different things. But yeah, it, her voice definitely does change during the scene. And and Evan is like doing the full court press of just think about it though. Like we could mm-hmm. we could be together like you know the rest of our lives. And she's like, yeah, but that's real short for you. And yeah. I would much prefer a a long and you know immortal life in theory. Um. Uh, and there, in this mix is maybe my favorite scene of the movie when they go to church. Yeah. And she starts trans. I mean, it's just kind of it's a, a very jokey scene where she starts transforming, and also <laughs> talking about like how uh, you know maybe she's not so much with God, and also while she's transforming this like tentacle stinger or whatever is <laughs> rising up behind Evan yeah. and about to get him. Yeah. Um but he ends up giving her the the shot. Uh mm-hmm. I think it's the last one as a matter of fact. It's the last one. Yeah. He's like, "We got another shot." And she's just like, "Why? Am I like transforming?" He's like, "A little bit." And she's like, "Is it bad?" And she's like, "Maybe take the shot. Maybe do it here." <laughs> yeah. And she's just like, "Yeah, it's my last one." And it's like, "Yeah, take the shot." <laughs> And when they and, leave, oh my god, this is the best line. I'm sorry, this is this is filled with so many great lines this film, but this is my favorite. The, as they're leaving, of uh, like, I, I think it's an old couple, but it, yeah. I think it's the old man who says to the the woman, like, "What was that?" Yeah, and she says, "Oh, a zombie." <laughs> as uh, what was a zombie? A was zombie compl- was taking heroin. Yeah, a zombie was taking heroin. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Because she's been going through all the shit, and she's talking about real like events from back yonder as she was there, and she's saying, "Oh yeah, then I did this here, and then this happened, and that was really bad, and then and everything." And she's clearly just listening into this conversation. It's like, what was that? It's like, oh, a zombie was taking her away. <laughs> yeah, and you know, like there are all these moments, like when they are seeing like murals on the wall, and and she's like, "Oh, this is actually me." Yeah. You know, from back in the day. And, you know, there were artists who tried to capture me uh, and so forth. And and she kind of joked, oh, like, there's a great moment where they're looking at this fresco or whatever with her. And she's like, look at that guy. He looks so angry. Yeah. And and kind of. It's like, ah, stop hitting me. <laughs> yeah. Kind of making fun of this, like, thousand-year-old work of art because mm-hmm. she was there. Yeah, yeah, it's just like I can take the piss out of it because it's my, it's me. You can't take the piss out of it though. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, like, and because he bought her this book as well. Because after he realizes that she's got two eyes, different colors, um, he sees this book with someone with a woman on it. It's an old piece of art, it's like a mosaic, I think, who has the same affliction, and and then he gives it to her, and not realizing that oh, it was actually her. Mm-hmm. And she's like, yeah, that book you got me, that's me um and and the thing is is that she because she changes her appearance every time she transforms because she'll take on part of the dna makeup of the male donor i guess for lack of a better term um it's amazing that she still looks so unbelievably feminine after doing this two thousand years but um but yeah so she apparently will start to look a bit like the guy who she she slept with so that she could birth herself kind of thing and she's essentially just because because obviously like every time she births herself it'll be it's different parenting technically one half anyway um so yeah so she has a slightly different appearance every time and then this is the other conversation they have while they're in Pompeii is that like 
<laughs> is that if they did stay together and she just continually birthed herself then and even as he he like grew old or whatever um if he stuck around with her then it would kind of be inbreeding yeah <laughs> because she would also be his daughter as well yeah. as is yeah and it would be kind of incestuous and gross and he's like yeah i'm not really okay with that like out of everything we've gone through that is kind of where i draw the line <laughs> right. all the monster <laughs> stuff is fine but that's, that's totally cool whatever's your kink is all good but yeah incest i'm not cool with which i feel uh, like it's fair it's fair comment <laughs> sure yeah, yeah yeah no i mean you got to draw the line somewhere mm -hmm. and and incest is a great place yeah i mean they're not first cousins either they're like father daughter so yeah you know. <laughs> and so the movie kind of wraps up with them after they kind of bounce around town for a while and have mm -hmm. this great day together, they go back to, you know, essentially the base of the volcano in Pompeii. Yeah. Where they're going to kind of wait it out. And he's again, making his, his play for, you know, you could, if you really loved me, then we could live a life together. And she's like, but it's so short. And he's like, that's kind of what makes it beautiful. Mm. is that you learn to appreciate all these moments because there are only so many of them. Yeah. And she's like, eh, I don't know about that, but, you know. Tell me listen. about it anyway. Yeah. Tell me about and, the finite is what she says, I think. Yeah, that which is a really good line. Tell me about the it's finite really, is good. Oh, it's so, so many, so many fucking good lines in this film. It's such a... Benson and Moorhead, you fucking geniuses. And she tells him to... When I start to transform, when it comes down to the moment where I, mm -hmm. you know, I am going to become this horrible monster. And it before, is. Yeah. Fucking nasty. You need to run. Yeah, because I'm going to get big. Yeah. This is going to be the biggest, gnarliest thing that you've seen me transform into. And I'm going to come try to kill you. Mm -hmm. And so you need to get out of there. Yeah, which is very kind of praying mantis Black Widow style. -y. You know, you get the insemination and then you kill the the mate. Yeah, and so uh, he says, <laughs> "Thank you, all right, season well, one of Buffy." <clears throat> <laughs> right. <laughs> where I learned uh, all my biology. Yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, it's where I learned all my politics. The, the right. mayor and Buffy is mm -hmm. kind of yeah. Uh, I learned everything how I see Buffy. Politicians. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh -huh. it teach you about death oh, with the body. Oh, speaking of transformations and... into evil monsters. Hey. Yeah. There you go. It all comes full circle. Look no further than Angel. Yeah. Oh, Season so three of Buffy. Don't, it's... don't, because you're gonna open up a you're gonna open up a can of worms that we, we I need to go to bed at some point. So fair enough. <laughs> so, we'll save it for another time. The the Buffy the Vampire Slayer will talk will come again. Uh, <sighs> Many times, I'm sure. Evan is gonna is gonna wait this out. He he has her you know head in his lap. He's stroking her hair. Oh, that's uh, so nice. It's yeah, it's this really wonderful moment, and then, um, well, we because it, it kind of zoom, it kind of does a slow zoom in on his face as he's talking about like, you know, the sun's every sunrise and sunset is so beautiful. It doesn't matter what else is going on. It just it's a reminder that you only have so many and things and really poetic shit. Like this guy is he's he's a poet, right? And as we're zo slowly zooming in, we don't see her. We kind of hear her. <laughs> Yeah, we hear this kind of like sticky kind of like crunching and you're like, oh, God, what's happened? What's happening beneath that camera lens? Like, oh, my God, what's going to happen? What are we going to see? And then what happens? Sorry, Bo? Uh, well, it turns out that she transforms into herself like she it turns out she really loved him after all. Yeah, that she stays herself and uh, and everything is happy. Yeah, and th and then what's happening in the background? Yeah, well, that's where it's less happy because now the volcano <laughs> that uh, destroyed Pompeii mm -hmm. is uh, is starting to smoke. Yeah, uh, as if it might erupt again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my notes go. Oh yay! Oh shit! Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I mean, I guess the question there is. Okay, I mean, we're kind of getting to, you know, what is the point of all of this? But mm -hmm. isn't it like, well, it's regardless of what happens from this point on, it's still a happy ending because the, these two people have found love with one another and yeah. she is able to live 
you know, in quotes, a normal life. Yeah. But, but the only reason she can do that is because she like acknowledges her feelings for him and, and likewise. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's this, and it's this whole kind of thing of like, um, okay. I don't want to say that like, you know, the point of, of living is love, but it, I, I guess it kind of is, is not necessarily just in terms of romantic love. It's any kind of like genuine connection, you know, like that whole, that um, old adage of like, no man is an island. Like you need connections, you need people. It's not just enough you being by yourself. And she's, you know, she says, cause he says, are you not lonely? Is your life not lonely? And she's like, yeah, I was until I met you. Um, and, you know, cause you can't just go through life being by yourself and having these meaningless non-connections and just you know using people for your needs and and that's it you have to give and take and this is you know it's like their conversations like she gets annoyed with him because he won't share and then later on she won't share and he gets annoyed with her because you know he's like well hang on, I just told you all this shit about me which was really hard you have to fucking open up as well you know and it's it's that thing of like life is about the give and take life is about love and connection and you know whether that's a romantic love whether that's a family love whether that's a a friendship love because we see all of these connections that he has you know he he, we see this um sort of even just that moment um that first opening scene it's about two minutes long and she's on a deathbed but you really do sense that love between them you know and then you know you see the love that Jeremy Gardner's character has for him and and they have this really great rapport and and then we see the fact that he can be taken in by complete strangers and they you know even if it is a fleeting thing they still have a connection they open up and they share um and everyone who we meet shares something about themselves and every time he has that moment with someone and the only time it doesn't happen is when really when he he has that meaningless sort of one night stand or non one night stand kind of thing um and from that moment and and that moment is the most empty he feels you know um when he's not able to get whatever it is that he needs or open up without her kind of scoffing at him and anytime he meets someone or interacts with someone where he can have a real honest conversation or have some sort of emotional connection on some level he gets he lives he lives the most in those moments um and it's a really beautiful movie for that and well for lots of reasons but also for that and um you know and and when he meets someone who gives it back on that level it's a genuine connection too and it you know that's when they really both start to to live they go off and they have these adventures and they do all these things and they're in this beautiful setting and he realizes this is how I want to live my life I want to be with you and I want to share things with you and and open up and I think that that can be said true of any kind of relationship not 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 just a romantic one but you know if you've got people in your life who you really care about and who you share things with then that's what makes life work that's the things that life is worth living for and then that's how you can appreciate all of the stuff that he talks about at the end like the sunsets and stuff you know yeah I I hard hard to top that yes it is <laughs> sorry no 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 i mean you're absolutely right because it it is uh, I, there's a line i'm reaching for and i can't quite remember it but it's about like you know i, I think it's dead poets like you know the yes these are all noble pursuits but you know poetry romance love mm-hmm. these are what what makes living worthwhile yes and that's the, that's the truth. I mean, that's ultimately what the movie is getting at is, yes, you can go through thousands of years of existence, mm-hmm. but without ever really living or connecting. And mm-hmm. then no matter how long your life is, what is the what is the value of it? Yeah. And, yeah. you know, in, in, <laughs> uh, in typical heart of horror fashion, the mm-hmm. thing that we come back to is it it truly is about um you know the the love that you create with people yeah definitely and yeah we, and as you said whether that's romantic love whether it's it's platonic love whatever it is but you know m- making those connections with people so that when you wake up in the morning it isn't just 
well, here's a set of things I'm going to do today that Mm -hmm. might have some personal meaning to me, but that's where the meaning ends. It doesn't, nothing exists outside myself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, No, yeah, 100%. And um, I just, yeah, I think this film is definitely one of those ones that require very, like several watchings. um, Because there's, I mean, apart from like all of the, the messages and everything like there's so much these little, little nods and stuff to what she what she is and her ulterior motives and stuff but yeah like um but the but the main messages and thing is there's definitely something that like it it's it's threaded through the entire film um and it's beautifully concluded by this last scene but mm-hmm. it is threaded through this entire film and like i wasn't because like when i because when i watch a film um for for this show um I sort of try and think like okay cool so like what stuff can I pull from this and when it's a first watch like this one like today well not today sorry earlier like I watched it this morning I'll be honest um and I uh uh yeah and I was like okay cool so I'm gonna pull some holiday romance stuff and then by the end like um yeah like it was about something else it wasn't just about like you know what's the most terrifying one night stand you've ever had yeah. <laughs> um, or anything but like it's about the, the you know it's about something much deeper than that and so I want to go back and watch it again so that I can sort of like appreciate all of the the threads and things going through it of like you know what's important and you know what's what's the stuff worth living for in life because it's not a shitty job that you don't like just to pay the bills. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, you know, it can be your hobbies and, and so forth, but it's gotta be, yeah. You know, my argument is that for life to be meaningful, it has to, there has to be an element of service to others. Yeah. In some degree, whether that's emotionally, like it's it or the connection, perhaps that's the the way you put it, and it's probably smarter than what I was saying, which is it it is just your connection to people, and that's what matters. Everything else is window dressing. Yeah, it is, it is about you know how you can affect others, how they affect you. Yeah, yeah, it's that sharing of that connection. Yeah, yeah, because that what yeah that's what makes you feel like you're part of the world. You know. Yeah, yeah, it's like that you know that is it like fucking fucking talk talk there's like a, a a mobile phone like a cell phone advert where they kind of like have all of the lights in the world and then they join them together by like this electrical kind of beam and it shows how everyone's connected and it's it looks really pretty i mean it's really it's just a big marketing ploy for get online sure. <laughs> with our products but the, the kind of the imagery that it gives off of like everyone being connected and you know everyone like if you remove the uh, superficiality of like you know mobile phones it's a really really nice kind of uh, image to look at of how everyone's sort of connected and if you want to look at those electrical beams as moon beams and heart beams instead then <laughs> um then that's nice <laughs> just like that uh, neil diamond song put yeah. on your heart beams yes that's i don't know that song i'm agreeing it's, but that's a shame <laughs> Because <laughs> I think the song was written about the movie E.T. Oh, really? I think so. So if you want to hear the Neil Diamond version of E.T., uh, check out the the song Heartlight. Okay, I will. And, I will do that. Oh, well, that makes sense, doesn't it? Heartlight. Yeah. And okay. uh, Neil Diamond is a, a gift that we give each other. Okay. Um, oh well, thanks. This is this is you and me having a sharing connection thing. I've got to. I have to think of someone to recommend you please any old time i that will uh, be my best all right so i think on that note we'll wrap her up here because we have given as much wisdom as we possibly could give anyone <laughs> uh in this episode until <laughs> at least the next episode next month when yeah. even more wisdom and tales of poopery will <laughs> will come down <laughs> Uh, the pipe in a new episode of, of Heart of Horror. Any final thoughts, Kate? Um, take the epidural when they offer it and um, don't let your husband look. All right. That'll do it <laughs> this time. <laughs> we'll see everybody in a month. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.